Welcome to the Good News Only Radio Show. My name is Tanya McIntyre, and I am passionate about positive media. I founded the Good News Only way back in 2010. I wanted there to be a great resource where you can watch, read, and hear all the good things going on in the world and all the good people that are in the world doing good things. And as always, I have one of those good people with us for this episode of the Good News Only Radio Show. Denise Winchester and her daughter run a website. It's called kidsnewsnyc.com. Now, this was all started by Denise's now eight-year-old daughter, Waverly. Waverly loves to write, and Waverly wanted a way for kids to connect, to submit their stories, have their voices heard, and maybe even help with literacy among kids. So that is when Kids News NYC was born just a year ago. I am so delighted to have you guys here. Denise and Waverly, welcome to the Good News Only. Hi, thank you. Hi. Hi, Waverly, you're getting over an illness, so you you are our little trooper today. Thank you so much for joining us, because I know you're getting over a terrible virus, and now you're, you've got bronchitis, so I really, really appreciate you putting on your superhero hat to join us today. Thanks, Waverly. Now, you were only seven when you had this amazing idea to start a website for kids. And, you know, I have to say, Waverly, when I was seven... Uh, for what very little I can remember from way back then, I do remember being pretty much, um, you know, fairly self-centered, as most seven-year-olds are. I didn't uh, give any thought at all to how I could bring people together to improve themselves or even think about changing the world in any way at all. So I am very curious how this idea started for you. Where did it all come from? Well, one day... My mom and I were taking a walk around the neighborhood with the camera. We were doing this thing called phone-free fun. We were walking around looking at things, and I had a notebook and a pen. It was around, like, Halloween, and there were lots of spooky houses. Um, I took some pictures and took some notes, and when we got home, I turned it into a newspaper called Kids News. My mom loved it and looked around to send it to a wi- website that printed Kids News, but she couldn't find one, so she created KidsNewsNYC.com. How cool is that? You know, that's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the story because I spent a long time as a broadcast journalist in mainstream media, Waverly. I don't know how much you know about my story, but I finally got tired of being immersed in bad news every day. And I walked away from that career, but it wasn't until a few years later that I was having coffee with my friends, and they were talking about, you know, how difficult it was to leave a career that had defined me for most of my adult life. And I, you know, I said, yeah, absolutely, it was a difficult decision to make, but I just no longer wanted to be aligned with all the manipulation and the misinformation that was happening with mainstream media. And I said, but you know, if anyone ever starts a radio station for the good news only, hey, I would be there like a shot. And I walked away from that coffee meeting, and I was thinking, why am I waiting for somebody else to do it? So I'm really glad that you shared that story, Waverly, because you know what? It does only take one person to change the world. Did did you think that you were really going to start changing the world when you started this? Definitely. <laughs> wow. You are going to be such an inspiration for so many seven, eight-year-olds. I'm curious to know, Waverly, what your mom was saying about all this when you thought about starting a website. What was your mom saying? Um, well, she would be very proud of me. I know that. <laughs> That's awesome. You never post anything negative. That's what I just love about Kids News NYC. And another thing I love is that you don't enable comments because that, of course, lets the kids express themselves without any possibility of getting negative or mean-spirited comments from all these armchair critics. You know who they are, the people who like to just sit there anonymously and, uh, you know, send all these negative comments. So you made that decision 
to turn off the comments, not enable any comments. You don't post anything negative. But the decision not to enable comments, why did you think that was so important? Well, for the places we review and the events we go to, I don't want to say anything bad because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And I think that there is always something good you can find whatever you do. We only go to places that are good for kids, so it's pretty easy to write good things. Everything we do is always really fun. I didn't want to comments posted because I know that people can be mean, especially when you don't know each other, and it's online. Sometimes I see that on YouTube, and I didn't want any kid reporter to feel bad about something they wrote. I also don't want to feel bad about anything I write. Mm -hmm. You have little hearts under the posts that people can push if they like something. That's it. That is such a great idea. How do you find your kid reporters, Waverly? I'm curious. Where do all these kids come from who want to be reporters and work with you on your website? Well, some of them come, come from my friends who tell their friends about the website, and then those friends tell their friends, and basically that goes on. So you could, so that basically means that there's a lot of friends who know that about kids' news, so then I could start writing for it. Very good. I'm curious to know, Waverly, is uh, when I was in school, I was editor of the school newspaper. Do you have a school newspaper? Um, yeah, but you can only, like, write it if you're um, older. Oh, that age discrimination. That's a, that's yeah. a pesky thing when you're too young, and it'll catch up with you again when you're too old. So, Waverly, I'm going to now talk to your mom, Denise. I'm curious to know uh, how or if messages from mainstream media affect you and your family. It doesn't sound like it does, but you tell me the story. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm sort of a reformed news junkie. Huh? So I was the type of lady that would watch the news. Honestly, I used to say I watch it at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 12 p.m., 5 p.m., 10 p.m. So I was a, was a news junkie. <laughs> but um, now that I have a little girl who understands more, I, I honestly, I had to curb it. I found myself shielding uh, Waverly from lots of the stuff I was hearing and also explaining that the pictures and the words that she saw and heard, they weren't necessarily the truth. And I was like, I had to tell myself that. You know what? Well, you, you know, sometimes you learn when you have a daughter or a son you teach yourself some things, too. So I also noticed Waverly's anxiety level really rising um, with the news on and the TV on. And for her, she'll probably come in at this, but um, I noticed especially for her with reports of bad weather, she would be totally anxious. So I found myself, like, hiding news from her and, like, texting people, like, don't mention the storm or don't have the TV on around her. So, you know, I... I guess for us, it, it does produce some anxiety, and we, we have to, you know, chill out on it a bit. And mm -hmm. I, I like your, your media diet. I'm, I'm trying to follow it. You know, I do need to know what's going on in the world. I need to know the weather. So I, I have to find a balance, and, you know, I'm trying to teach her to use our best judgment and not to become total puppets, but it does affect us, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there is a weather app that you can put on your phone, Denise. That's I know. <laughs> I'm so old-fashioned. You know, I, I have to just put the weather app on my phone. You'd think I would have, you know. I'm going to do that right after this, I promise. <laughs> Excellent. You know, I have um, an elderly uh, aunt who lives in another province here in Canada, and, uh, you know, we're maybe uh, a one-and-a-half-hour plane ride. I don't know what that would be in miles, but we only see each other once every five years if we're lucky. And she is a news junkie. She spends all her time in front of the TV watching the news and the weather as well. And she calls me from time to time when we've had a snowfall. And she said, oh, my gosh, are you guys okay with that awful storm that you've had? Oh, that's my mother. <laughs> and I said, what storm? I said, we had a couple of centimeters of snow. It was hardly a storm. She said, oh, you should have seen the pictures on the news. They were showing, you know, the cars and the ditches. 
And I said, oh, come on, Beverly, you know, you know, you should know being my aunt that mainstream media is renowned for taking the most sensational uh, stories that they can find with the most graphic pictures that they can find to make a story and blow it way out of proportion. Yeah, a lot of fear-mongering, and I'm finding more and more with weather, so I, I will get that app. Very good. And, you know, Denise, the reason I'm passionate about positive media, I don't know how much you've learned about me, but I call, every, I, I call myself your perpetually positive pal. <laughs> So I think I annoy my friends sometimes. But I'm so passionate about positive media because, you know, as I said to Waverly, I spent a very long time being immersed in, in negative news every day as a broadcast journalist. And I think we really need lots of positive messages. I think uh, positive psychology is now saying you need three positive messages to offset one negative message. Oh. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that all those negative media messages that we're inundated with seeming to constantly tell us that we're never enough, which is why I, I jokingly, I, it started as a joke. I said, you know, really, you should take the diet that really works, a media fast, because everybody I talk to is always on a diet trying to lose weight, which annoys me to no end, because there is no uh, successful diet. I mean, you, you know, eat healthy, you know, you, what you put in, and stay fit, and you will maintain your ideal body weight. You know, we can't all be looking like the 1% of society in the model magazines that are represented to us as being normal, because it's not normal. It, so that's my passion, is just to educate people on taking the diet that really works, a media fast. Don't watch, read, or listen to news and see how much your life improves. So what media message for, message for you, Denise, kind of sh shaped your thought patterns growing up? I'm curious. Well, definitely I can say that it's changed now, and I'm much more like you. I just, you know, I don't pay too much attention. But growing up, of course I felt, <laughs> you know, I, I think that's the most of how I got affected was how I felt about my looks, I mm. guess. or And also I was, you know... I'm a little bit, I know, I'm sorry, I'm a little unclear, but basically, you know, you're not enough. Yeah, we're never enough if, from the beauty magazines, right? I mean, it, all of that. It's yeah. the same, and, and I find it just as bad, if not worse, but at least my daughter has me to sort of teach her that the same thing you're trying to say, we, and I don't, we, I don't even want to be that, mm -hmm. you know? Good. I don't know. Well, I'm wondering how you think mainstream media is influenced. And what she is, and the generation of young minds. Do you think it's any different yeah. for your daughter than it was for you growing up? I'm sorry? Do you think things are any different for Waverly with regard to all the mainstream media that she is hearing, her generation? So <laughs> are things different for her as opposed to the way you grew up? I, I wonder if we all say the same thing. I think it's worse now. But... You know, what did we have when I was young? We didn't have so many images. I don't think. I mean, I think everything is so much more accessible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, every everybody has so many different ways to to get these messages. And I don't know. I, I do think it's worse. I think a lot of visual images are, you know, really sexual, really overly mature. Um, even just the anxiety we were talking about, I think that it's worse, and I just think that it's not the best time for young children growing up and, and being inundated with these messages. I'm, I'm trying, like I said, to, to teach her and, and my little website to counteract all that and let kids be kids, and I guess all you can do is, is hope that you can educate your child the best way and not let them really buy into to those falsehoods. Absolutely. Denise, when we really came to you uh, with her idea to give kids a voice, how did, how did everything evolve? Um, you know, I thought what she wrote was the cutest thing I ever saw. I mean, she writes. She's been writing. She was writing little books. You know, it's, you know how you kind of know what you can sort of see what your children are into very early on. So it was no surprise for me that she loved writing, but that particular thing, I think she kind of touched on that we did this phone-free fun, and, and I'm guilty of, of course, being on the phone a lot, so 
I have to force myself, you know, the media fast and also the phone fast. So from time to time, we do these little phone-free fun days. So when, you know, we just sort of took a little walk, she comes home and immediately puts together this little layout. And I just thought it was really adorable. And she's like, you know, we should do this, Mom. We should do kids' news. And I'm no journalist, you know, I, I... I, like you said, sort of just for it didn't take long. I was like, oh, there's got to be somewhere I can I can send this, and then I was I it was like a flash after that when I realized there was nowhere really that I found. Um, it just it had to be done. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was like this thing that had to be birthed from me, and I and I I had no experience whatsoever. I wanted, I meet, you know, we created it out of air with a lot of hard work and belief, you know, and that, that was it, really. It was a strong belief, and I would not let myself not do it. I, it was easier not to do it, and it's still easier not to do it. But I, I just had to see it done for her because I, I couldn't let her down in that regard. It was a fabulous idea, and... If I waited, I remember last summer, I had it on a list forever. Oh, we sh- I should do this, and I was kind of toying with it until finally it was June, and I said, no, I don't care what money I have to spend. I'm going to bring this thing from the ground. I'm going to create it for her, and it was like a labor of love, if that makes any sense. Oh, I love that, labor of love. And you guys are going to be interviewing, actually, you're going to be bringing uh, one of my favorite people, Matthew Profizer. He uh, has the website with his friend. Uh, Colton, they do Restoring Faith in Humanity. I just love the work they're doing, and that's how we all connected. So, you know, I I just love the fact that like-minded people come together, regardless of where you are in the world. So tell me about how uh, Waverly found Matthew and how all that came about. She probably found him the same way I did on social media. Yeah, you know, that, um, that fabulous video. I saw the video. And I showed Waverly the video, and we're always looking. Like, our motto is there's news on every corner, and, you know, there's just there's a story in everybody. There's a story in everything. There's always something interesting going on. And um, so I saw this, you know, this young man, and I show Waverly, and she said, she's like, we should interview him for Kids News, because I still don't really, you know, I'm, it's still sort of new to me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just found him, and I, I, that's what I'm learning as I go, just sort of pitching to people. So I give him the whole spiel, like, hi, I'm from this Kids News website, and my daughter wants to interview you. And, and he's so sweet. I remember what he wrote back. He was like, everything good that's happened to me has happened because somebody, you know, a mentor has given me a chance or something like he was so gracious as you can imagine you know because I was like oh he's never going to write me back he's got this viral video you know but I said let me just try you know if an eight-year-old can can interview him and you know and so he was really sweet and um so they we interviewed him and and again I as you were I'm sure and I listened to your um interview with him I was just really struck by him so then she and I, we like to do these themes kind of for, like we did anti-bullying, and, you know, there's always something you can, again, we're learning as we go, so we're trying February, kindness, love, and um, she had this idea, well, why don't we work together? So, you know, again, I just, I just made it happen. <laughs> I'm, um, so we're going to fly them out. They're coming on Thursday, and we're going to do these random end planned acts of kindness it's like a whole weekend full of it and we just you know Waverly thought of this little slogan kindness starts with kids so we thought who better to work with you know and I thought New York City is um you know without getting political it's just you know not the best time Mm. um a lot of people are you know upset or it's just one of those times you know so it's cynical times like you try to do you just sort of counteract yep darkness with the light or something like that you know <laughs> exactly just, it's a three to one ratio denise so we have our work cut out for us for sure come that'll be three <laughs> <laughs> well good for you and yes matthew is uh just one of those beautiful souls and very giving i can't wait to see what you guys produce it's going to be amazing i know they've got a huge following in such a short time 
So, I know. Yeah, they are doing oh, some they're great. phenomenal work. Now, we're assuming that all our listeners know who Matthew is. So Matthew and his friend Colton have created this website on social media called Restoring Faith in Humanity. And I came across... Restoring Faith in Humanity, sorry. Pardon me? Is there search in them? Yes. It, did I get the name wrong? What was it? Um... Well, you just left off the pursuit, sorry. Sorry, yes, because, yeah, the followers are called pursuiters. Thank you, Denise, of course. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So it's the pursuit of restoring faith in humanity. Uh, Yeah, it's very important when you're doing the search. The pursuit of restoring faith in humanity. And I came across Matthew's um, video that has since gone viral, and it was him alone in a parking lot, this big, dark parking lot, snow-covered cars surrounded him, and there was just him and a snow brush and a camera. And he was going from car to car in this hospital parking lot, cleaning the snow off all the cars, because he said, I want all the guys and, and ladies, all the nurses, the doctors, all the staff in that hospital who have been working this midnight shift, I don't want them to have to come out and clean their cars. And I thought, yep. wow. Got me right, you know, it struck me right there. I was like, oh, my God. I remember I was like, I had chills. Yeah, me too. So simple. And, of course, I want, you know, to inspire kids to do, you know, to learn. You know, these little simple things mean a lot. Absolutely. And what you just said about Waverly coming up with the motto for this whole weekend, coming up with uh, Matthew, what was it called? Kit. Uh, For our portion of it, kindness starts with kids. Kindness starts with kids. I love that. Thank you. I can't wait to see you. On behalf of her. Wait, you want to say thank you? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. (laughs) So what is your biggest challenge are you finding as a non-entrepreneur, Denise? Because I know you have a full-time job as well. This can't be easy. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is like... Everyone's like, are you crazy? What, what more are you doing? I, and I know, but it, like I said, it's just it has to be done. But I think my biggest challenge is learning the ropes as I go and trying to get people to know about us, even though we're this, like, tiny little website in the middle of giants, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, I like to say we're so small, we're not even a mom and pop. We're just a mom and kid, you know? <laughs> but um, the other big one, obviously, like you said, is finding time. I want to get this off the ground. Um, I I have to do this when I'm not working my real job. Mm-hmm. And also, I I can't always be in work mode with Waverly. You know, she spends a lot of time with her dad. We're not together. You know, and he's very active, and I'm very thankful for that. So, but, the, you know, the byproduct of that is that I have reduced time with her. So when I have reduced time with her, I, as a sort of a workaholic, you know, I have to either, I just, like, again, I have to try that phone-free fun. Now it has to be sometimes kids' news-free fun, like, can we go Mm -hmm. around the block and not write about something? Can I, you know, so time that's not work with my 8-year-old, I I have to continuously keep that in the forefront of my mind. It's not easy. Uh, Lastly, I have another challenge for me. I have to feel that it's okay to grow slowly with this website. Um, I, I'm, you know, I want to create a kids' news empire right now. You know, I don't want to mm-hmm. wait. So I'm very impatient, and it's only been like three, really three or four months that it's really been off the ground. And, um, you know, I have to just re- relax and just say, okay, you know, this doesn't have to be this huge thing. But honestly, then sometimes I want it to be huge already. You know, I'm just being honest. That's to me a challenge. You know, I want to feel like we're successful even if we don't have thousands of followers. You know, I, I want to find the the success in the doing. You know, like right. it's not the journey. It's the de- it's not the destination. It's, it's the, journey, the journey. That kind of thing. Yeah, and and you know we have to be careful how we define success as well. Exactly. You know, and, you know I'm struggling. You know, it, it comes and goes. I you know just in all honesty. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the fact that you're doing it with Waverly is, uh, you know, pretty phenomenal. It's it's great that you're getting to form this bond with her, this entrepreneurial bond. It's so cool that you're working together and doing this. Thank you. So, Denise, what are your wishes for the future? <sighs> um, I'll try to narrow them down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I mean, as far as KidsNewsNYC.com, I'll narrow it to that. I. I wish that it grows well beyond New York City. Um, 
eventually I wish to have a little army of kid reporters with, you know, little divisions of kids' news all over the world. I really do. Um, we both wish for it to help kids notice, you know, all the great people and things they have right at their fingertips. As a mom, I really, I think that's important, you know. I want, I want kids to open their eyes. I want them to be engaged, you know. I want... <laughs> Her eyes are already open. Good, sweetie. Now <laughs> let's open everybody else's. Um, I wish kids know that ideas really can become reality. This is living proof for me. I want, especially, you know, my daughter. That's my first wish that Waverly knows. Like, you think something, you don't sit around, you make it happen. No one's going to do it. Just do it, you know, and and that it can. Really, a dream can come true, an idea can become reality. And another wish I have is to eradicate the words, I'm bored, from children's vocabulary through this site. <laughs> Good for you. You know, I've always said, Denise, that parenting is the most important job in the world. And when you decided to become a parent, what was the most important thing that you wanted to instill in Waverly? Self-confidence. Mm. Uh, it took me so long. Or self-esteem. Self-confidence and self-esteem. Those were the biggies for me. Um, it took a long time for me to feel worthy, I guess. You know, I guess that's a lot of women, maybe. I don't know. You know, you need you need to be a wife. You need to be, you know, a certain level of career. There's a lot. But just to be worthy, just whatever she becomes whoever she becomes, that that type of feeling was really strong for me, that, that I could hopefully teach my child that that kind of, those values for herself. That's amazing. You know, I talk about how those negative core beliefs are ingrained in our psyche early on, literally from infancy, just by virtue of our birth, when we are women especially, uh, you know, we start to feel that we're unlovable, we're unsafe, undeserving, and not good enough. Right. Uh, may I just interrupt two seconds? Just this morning, I was telling Waverly that it seems like, seems like, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to start any uh, <laughs> gender wars, but that women say sorry more because we kind of walk by somebody. She said, I said sorry. And I said, yeah, I know. You, you know, and she's like, I don't know why I did that. And I said, it seems like we just do that a little bit more. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It was just this morning, so no. I just was reminded of that. Well, hey, Denise, I'm Canadian, so Canadians are world-renowned for saying we're sorry, apparently. We just we just do that. We, we just oh. apologize for being, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think the work you're doing with Waverly is amazing. Denise, I look forward to following Kids News NYC and seeing it grow on a global scale. I know you guys are on to great things. And the fact that you're aligning with Matthew, with uh, the pursuit of restoring faith in humanity, I, that, that can only just, that, that'll have a ripple effect that you guys will be riding that wave for a long time. Oh, cool. So well, I hope so. It's, they're great people. So. They are. And I just love Waverly's motto now, kindness starts with kids. Do I have that right? Yep, kindness starts with kids. Kindness starts with kids. So that's going to be kind of uh, her mission when Matthew arrives in New York City to do this project with you. So I imagine you're going to be filming a lot of it as well that we can look forward to on social media. Yes. Excellent. How do we connect with you and Waverly? Well, the easiest way to connect with us is by going to kidsnewsnyc.com, and you can follow us through the social media tabs that are right there on the right-hand side. <laughs> um, you can go, of course, to Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all Kids News NYC. Uh, Facebook.com, also Kids News NYC, kind of easy. Uh, if you would please help us grow, it would really mean a lot to us. Absolutely. It'll be my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us on the Good News Only radio show. Denise and Waverly Winchester running a website, kidsnewsnyc.com. They are going to do some incredible things to give kids a chance to connect. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. 
kidsnewsnyc.com. Check them out. And don't forget, take the diet that really works, a media fast. Don't watch, read, or listen to news and see how much your life improves. My name is Tanya McIntyre. As always, I am your perpetually positive pal, wishing you to live well, laugh often, love always, and of course, stay positive. <laughs>